Well, it's Monday morning here in my reality and we're ready for the big action. Or really any action. At this point, I will take any action. It's been very stagnant lately. So I wanna bring you guys up to speed on everything and especially Project Mission Improbable because we're finally making steps forward with it. So first things first, we got rained out again this Friday. So that's two rain outs for two attempts so far this year. Last year we got rained out 11 times. This is driving me crazy. And it's driving my poor dog sitter crazy. Doris, I'm sorry about it. I mean, I have no control over the weather. This Friday looks good. So with any luck, we'll get out there. Um, what else? So, you know, we've got our propane motor and trans ready to drop in. We've been working on the Belvedere out here, taking chunks out of it. A lot of grinding, a lot of scraping, a lot of ugliness going on. We're working on the interior now. And uh, with any luck, next, next couple of days we'll be finished out here. We can roll in inside, drop the motor and trans in, do the brakes, and we should have a running vehicle within... Every time I throw a timeline out there, it never happens, right? Soon. It'll be up and running soon. It's on my list of priorities. Uh, our tow XJ. So last week, late last week, we uh, we hooked everything up and actually threw another Jeep on the back of this thing and dragged it around. I tell you what, it tows good. It feels good. It's it's up to the task. So I haven't made any long distance trips with it yet, but I'm confident she'll go. So that's good with that. Now, mission improbable. All right. So now if you guys aren't familiar with this, the goal with this truck, with this Jeep, is to run a 13 second quarter mile, muscle car territory, a 13 second quarter mile, eighth mile equivalent, using nothing but either the parts that it was born with or direct replacements. So everything that goes on this 96 XJ has to be for the right make, model, and year 96 XJ. So now this particular one, if you're not familiar, if you, you weren't around for the beginning of this, we picked this up off Facebook Marketplace a couple of weeks ago. We paid 800 bucks for it. Now this particular Jeep, this is the reason I grabbed it is because it's a unicorn. So it's a two wheel drive, it's a two door. So it's the lightest possible combination you could have with an XJ. It's four liter, five speed. So this thing is, it's, it's stripped and it has like the best drivetrain you could have in it. And that's why we decided to base this exercise in, in that's what it is, it's an exercise because we're gonna work with just the parts that it was born with. They can be modified in any way necessary. Not everything it was born with has to come for the ride, but we are gonna keep it streetable and intact looking so you know, no, no cutting things or drilling holes and all the other stuff. It's gonna look stock, it'll sound stock, it'll you know have all of the functionality of a stock vehicle, but we are gonna get it into the 13s. A tenth at a time, a hundredth at a time, I have no idea how we're gonna get there from where we are right now, but I'm confident we can do it. So, we picked it up as a non-runner. It had been sitting since 2015 we discovered from from some receipts that were in there and the first thing we determined was that the computer was bad so we pulled it apart we found a couple of burnt capacitors we dropped it off over at dr art dr art's hot rod rehab he this is the kind of stuff that he works with and after he looked at it he says not worth it he says there's there's problems in the printed circuit itself so now the hunt is on for the right computer for that thing not easy to find 96 only right so there's no interchange with other years 96 only has to be from a five speed has to be from a four liter not an easy thing to find but i finally grabbed one off of ebay and it'll be here i, I ordered it on saturday it should be here tomorrow or the next day we we'll get our hands on it also while we were at it um the pump was bad so we found the wiring everything the relays everything was good to the back of the vehicle but we had no reaction from the fuel pump at all. So as it turns out, the pump, well, she sat with old gas in it since 2015, that's nine years, and she's absolutely toast. In fact, during the course of testing it, trying to get it to work, it started to, where's the burn wires? It actually started to cook wires. 
So that was that was fun. I left the battery hooked up while I was pulling it out, and it started smoking as I'm pulling it out. Like, Ooh, I don't know how much gas is in it or how flammable the gas would be. But anyway, make a long story short, new pump, actually the new pump just showed up this morning. So we've got that assembly. And I'm gonna go into the prices, what we're into this for altogether. Um, it needed a windshield. So we went and had a brand new windshield put in it. And uh, yeah, little stuff, needs marker light up front. It's got a busted tail light in the back. It had a trailer hitch on it. So we pulled the trailer hitch off. I still have to get a back bumper for it, but I'm not really worried about that right now. Somebody had robbed the catalytic converter out of it while it was parked. So we just ran a straight pipe. So like I said, it has to be the stock parts, but it doesn't necessarily have to come with all of the stock parts. So the, we've already done a cat delete at this point. This the, the goal here is to keep it completely stock appearing and completely drivable and legal. Here in Tennessee, we can get away with it. Now that doesn't mean it's gonna be legal where you come from, but here it'll be legal. So I'm not gonna stress it. So that's the rundown on the base. And like I said, I've just been going around cleaning it and, and making stuff work and undoing a lot of like, you know, the gypsy-like connections here and there. But it's, it's coming together. And with any luck, we'll have all of the parts we ordered in hand by the end of this week. And we can actually take it out and start breaking it in. The clutch pedal feels good, but I have no idea what the condition of the clutch is. The brake pedal feels good. I have no idea if the calibers and the wheel cylinders and all that are good. So we'll just wait on that until we can get it running and then assess where we have to go from here. But other than that, just waiting for the parts to come in. Should be running and driving by the end of this week. And again, see, every time I throw a timeline out there, it's like, you know, this is fairly simple at this point. It should go. But what I did was I want to go over the budget because I want to keep everything as cheap, let's say economic. We're trying to keep this thing as economical as possible. Because I know like the vast majority of the guys who watch this channel, just regular people, you work jobs, you got families, you got mortgages, you got everything. And it's like coming up with extra money to build a project is, is I know some people got money just falling out of their ass. Most of us aren't. So we try to keep things as economical as possible. So I ordered all of the various parts that are going in here from Rock Auto, Amazon, and eBay. I got the computer come from eBay. Uh, and I got a breakdown on what we're into this thing so far. All right, uh, I wrote it all down. Okay. All right. Uh, so, so far, we paid 800 bucks for the Jeep, yeah. as it sits. The windshield was $288 installed. The computer, $275. I, I obviously, I rounded these numbers off. But the computer is $275. The fuel pump assembly is $142. Okay, the tail light, uh, $24. The marker light was $5. The ignition switch. So when we got this thing, it had no keys. And I ended up destroying the ignition switch trying to pull the lock cylinder out. So I had to get one of those. So ignition switch, switch was 22. The lock cylinder with the keys was 19. All this from Rock Auto. It needed a shifter knob. So we got one of those coming, $8. And I ran over to Walmart and grabbed a battery for 70. So right now our total investment in this thing the vehicle and all of the parts is $1,650. It's probably gonna eat another 100 or $2 as we go along, I don't know, brake pads, fluids, so on and so forth. But I am fairly confident that we'll be able to hit the track with this thing for the first time, driving it to the track for under $2,000. So, and then, and then after that, I really don't see spending money on this thing except for like gaskets that go when we pull the motor apart because we are gonna port it and we're gonna do everything we can with these stock parts. But I I'm saying like all in we're gonna be between like twenty five hundred and three thousand dollars for the finished product. Now how long it's gonna take, what we're gonna have to go through, I don't know, but that's the fun of it. That's the journey. So we're gonna find the tents 
And after we're done finding the tens, we're gonna find the hundreds. And when we finish finding the hundreds, we'll go after the thousands. But eventually that thing will turn a 13 second quarter mile ET, eighth mile equivalent, and be completely drivable and usable vehicle. All right, so that's the update from here. I have to put this down now so I can actually accomplish things. And I'll see you tomorrow.